Hello and thank you for joining. Today's Python tutorial is the ninth tutorial and what I'm going to share with you today is how to create a, a game, a basic game. We're going to create a rock, paper, scissors game. Uh, before we jump in, I'm just going to go over at a high level what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do in this program is we're going to establish variables in order to track wins for the player and for the computer. And then we're going to ask the user for input and ask them choose rock, paper, or scissors. The computer select rock, paper, or scissors randomly. And then finally, we're going to run a while loop where we compare the selection, the player selection, rock, paper, or scissors, versus the computer selection. And then we determine a winner, or we declare it a tie, and then we track those results and print those out on the screen. And then finally, we ask the user if they want to continue to play and give them an option to break out of the, of the game. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm in the IDE. And we're going to open up a new file to create the program. So I'm going to say file, new file. And that brings up this new window. And in here, the first thing that I'm going to do is establish a variable named comp wins for computer wins. And I'm going to set that to zero. And then I'm going to do the same thing to track the player wins. And I'm going to set that to zero. The next thing I'm going to do is set up a function in order to let the user uh, make their choice for rock, paper, or scissors. And so this is something new we haven't discussed yet, but we're going to define this function. And the function in Python, in order to create that, you just type def for define and hit space. And then the function name, in this case, we're going to call it choose option. And then I'm open parentheses and close them. Do a colon, hit return, and now you'll notice it'll automatically indent. And now I'm going to go ahead and set up a variable and name it user choice. And I'm, instead of defining it or, de or declaring a value for it, I'm going to get user input. Okay, so now I'm going to ask the user on the screen, I'm going to say choose rock, paper, or scissors. Then I'm going to do colon, space, and then close the quotes. Then I'm going to close the parentheses, hit return, and now I'm going to go and do an if elif loop here, or if elif statements. If user choice in, and then what I do is I give the options that the user could type. I'm going to do rock with uppercase. I'm going to do rock with lowercase. I'm going to do r with lowercase, and I'm going to do r uppercase, and I'm going to close that bracket, and then I'm going to do a colon. Then I'm going to set user choice equal to lowercase r. Okay, so if they type any of the following, rock with uppercase r, rock with lowercase r, lowercase r, or r, uppercase, I'm going to con we're going to convert it and just say user choice is r. Okay, so we're going to do that for rock, paper, or scissors. So in order to save time, I'm going to go ahead and copy these over. And now you're going to notice these are LF statements. Okay, so now I've copied those over. And you'll notice, so I have a, if they choose any of these rock options, we convert it to lowercase r. Else if, or LF, they choose paper, you know, lowercase paper, lowercase p, or uppercase p, we convert it to lowercase p. And then the same thing for scissors. And then we put a final else statement here that says print, I don't understand, try again. And then it relaunches the choose option here. And the reason why we have this is because what if they type, you know, they mistype it or they type something that's not one of these options above, okay? So then the next thing that we do, now that we've set up a function to let the user make their choice, the player make their choice, now we need to define a function for the computer to make their choice. So we're going to define a new function, and we're going to call this one computer option. Just like the last one, we do a colon at the end. And then we're going to create a variable, and we're going to call it comp choice. Okay. So since the computer's not going to enter, see a screen and type an entry, we're going to have the computer choose it randomly. So in this case, we're going to use 
something called random. And then we're going to choose dot random R-A-N-D I-N-T. And you'll see there's different options here, but integer is what we want. We want a number, right? A whole number. And then what we're going to do is open parentheses and then we put the range of those numbers. So we're going to say between one comma three. Okay, so that's telling the random generator here to say choose a number between one and three. And then we run a series of if choices, okay, if and elif statements. If comp choice is equal to equal to or equivalent to one colon, we're going to set that to equal r, lowercase r. So in other words, if the computer selects one, we're going to do, we're going to set it to rock. If it says two, it'll be paper, three, it'll be scissors. And for sake of time here, I'm going to copy these over. And then here you'll notice that the um, LF comp choice, if it equals two, it's going to be um, paper and other, otherwise it's going to be um, scissors. All right. I forgot to mention this here. You notice at the end of this statement here, we're going to return the user choice. And at the end of this statement, we're going to return, return the comp choice or computer choice. The reason why that's so important is these variables, they're defined like user under cho underscore choice is defined within that function. That means it's not available outside of that function. So if we were to say in a later section of the program outside of this function, if we were to try to refer to the user underscore choice, it would not work because it doesn't understand that. It's just declared within this um, function. However, what the return option does here is it, it returns the value for that, and then we can use that return value later in the program. All right, the next thing we're going to do is now we're going to create a, a while loop, okay? And we're going to compare the results. So we're going to say while true colon, and by the way, when you again, when you're doing a while loop and you're doing true, it has to be uppercase T. And then just for, just for cosmetics, we're going to go ahead and add a space there. That's the quotes. And then we're going to do user choice is equal to choose option Right, that's what the user enters. And then the comp, comp choice or the computer choice is going to equal the computer option that we created above. Okay, whoop. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, then again, just for cosmetics, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple statements there. Okay, now we're going to run a series of if elif statements here to do the comparisons. So I'm gonna go ahead and type the first one and then copy the rest of them. So what I'm gonna do here is say, if user choice equal to equal to R colon, now I need to go compare that to a, com a, comp a computer choice. And let's assume that's also equal to R. Then I do colon. And then what, what are the results we want to print out on the screen? And say, you chose rock. The computer chose rock. You tied. OK, and then close the quotes. OK, and then we run an elif statement. What if you chose P and the computer chose rock? And, and, and we go through the whole sequence of options here. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, to save time, I'm going to go ahead and copy these out. OK, so I've pasted in the rest of the program. And you'll notice here, so we did the if statement. So if the user choice is rock, then we need to compare that to the computer choice of rock the computer choice of paper, the computer choice of scissors, okay? And then depending on what they've chosen, you know, you tied, you lose, you win. And then down here, we did the same exact thing for paper. User chose paper. What if the computer chose rock, paper, or scissors, okay? And this, 
it's extra spaces in there. We can take this out. But All right, so now once we run through all those sequences, then we come down here and we do a print statement. Again, this is just for cosmetics on the screen to add a space. And then we print player wins and then a colon and then a space. So that's just text. And then we add the value of the player wins. And then we do the same thing on the next line with computer wins and this tracks them. If this, if we were trying to just copy this variable down, it would not work because it's an integer um, variable. Okay, but what we're doing here is we're converting it to a string, right? So plus string or str and then the variable name. Okay, and that, that just prints it as a string. Finally, we come down here and we ask the user choice, do you want to play again, yes or no? And if they choose any of these options, we go ahead and continue or pass. If they choose no, any of these no options, then we break. Otherwise, if they just, you know, they can always break out of everything. Okay. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to run through this. I'm going to go ahead and save this program. So I'm going to do uh, run, run module. And I get the save option. And I'm going to say OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and save this as, I'm going to call it RPS4. OK. Now, OK. So this is the output. Now it's going to bring you back to the shell, the IDE here. And let's assume I choose paper. I hit return. And we have a problem here. OK. And the thing that I forgot in this program, and I'm going to add it right now, you notice that it says comp choice equals random dot rand int one through three name random is not defined. OK, so the issue here. Is that. In this program. When you run this random dot rand int. The program doesn't understand it right now, so you have to go to your, inside your program, we're going to do this at the top. We're going to say import a module. Okay, so we're going to say import the random module. So import random. There's lots of different modules out there that include the support for these different um, functions that you would like to run. Okay, in this case, it's random. So if you're looking for another one for a different math one or something like that, you know, just try to typically Google it. Okay, so now I'm going to say run again, and I'm going to do run module. I'm going to say OK to save, and then let's try it again. Let's do paper. OK, computer won that one. I chose paper. The computer chose scissors. I lost. OK, so I'm going to say yes, and let's do rock. OK, and there, you chose rock. The computer chose scissors. You win. OK, and you can see it's tracking them. I'll do one more, and let's do scissors again. And then the computer chose paper that time. I chose scissors, so I won. So player wins two, computer wins one. And this time I'm going to say no for do I want to play again, and it's going to break me out of the program. All right, so that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thanks a lot for joining. And, oh, one more thing is I'm going to try to post this code in the description. I'm not sure if it will accept it all, but hopefully it will. Thanks. Take care.